In this video, we're going to look at how we interpret vectors in the rectangular coordinate system, so placing them on the x and y axis. And a big part of how we do that is we look at what we call unit vectors. So the unit vectors i and j are going to be, um, they have a magnitude of 1, and the unit vector i is going to go along the positive x-axis, so from 0 to 1. And the unit vector j is always the vertical one that goes on the y-axis. They always have a magnitude of 1. Okay, We can represent all other vectors in terms of i and j. So um, if I always start at the origin, because remember what's unique about vectors is in order for them to be equal, they only need to have the same direction and the same magnitude. They do not have to have the same location. And so we can choose to put a vector wherever we want and it's usually easy for us to calculate if we start with our um, initial point at the origin, zero, zero. Okay, and if it goes to AB, then we can write that as A times unit vector I plus B times unit vector J. And if you turn the page, then you have sort of a visual representation of what that means. I is our horizontal unit vector. So whatever number A is, that's how many I's I need to go horizontally, maybe five, and then the vertical distance is going to be however many J's we need to go, and so that's how we get um, that vector. So A and B are scalars. They're going to change the length of the unit vector when you multiply it by a scalar. Um, so here's sort of a summary of what that means again, and this is true whenever we set it up going from the origin to some point AB, then any vector V can be written in the terms A times I plus B times J. A and B are called the scalar components of V, and A is called the horizontal component because it goes along the x-axis, and B is called the vertical component. And so therefore, the magnitude then Again, we talked about Pythagorean theorem is where this comes from. The magnitude of V, as long as you know the I and J components, A and B, is going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared. So here's two examples of how we would interpret that. We want to sketch the vector V and find its magnitude. I'll do the first one with you, and then I want you to pause and try the second one. So... For example two, the vector is negative 3i plus 4j. So that means that we need to go 3 in the negative x direction and 4 in the positive y direction. So that would be um, we're going to go back 3 this way and up 4 this way. So our final answer is going to be this vector from 0, 0 out to right here. And don't forget the arrow. Okay, so that purple line there with the arrow on it, that is vector V. And that's how we would label that. So that's it. It's kind of like um, an ordered pair. This vector is going from 0, 0 whoops, to the point negative 3, 4. So A and B tell you where your terminal point, meaning the arrow, should go. Then... To find the magnitude of V, we want the square root of negative 3 squared plus 4 squared, which you may recognize as a Pythagorean triple. That comes out to 5, so that's your magnitude. So go ahead and pause for a moment, and in about 5 seconds, I'm going to put up the answer for number 3. So this is what you should get. Again, this means that our terminal point is going to be at 2, negative 4, so that's where our arrow lands. And then using the Pythagorean theorem, we get the magnitude, which simplifies to 2 root 5. And that's pretty much that. Now, let's look at some operations um, that we can do in the coordinate plane that helps us locate vectors. So each of these points had an initial point at the origin. And so anytime you have that, that's called a position vector. 
any vector whose initial point is not at the origin can be shown to be equal to a position vector because again, we can translate those anywhere and they're still going to be equal. So as long as we just subtract the difference between the x's and subtract the difference between the y's, that will convert this to a position vector. And so let's look at examples four and five. So we want V to be the vector that has an initial point at three, negative one, and a terminal point at negative two, five. Um, so we need to subtract to be able to figure out the um, values of a and b now the order does matter because remember the direction that your vector points um, is important so we can go ahead and label our x and y coordinates and now we're ready to go ahead and subtract so we're going to do x2 minus x1 that's going to give us our a value and we're going to do y2 minus y1 and that's going to give us our b value and so now we just need to combine those values. So negative two minus three gives me negative five i, and then five minus minus one is gonna make this positive six j. Um, if you do those in reverse, you're gonna get a positive five and a negative six, which is gonna point your vector in the opposite direction. So we wanna make sure that we don't do that. And so we said that this is vector V, so let's make sure that we give it its name. And there we go, that's all there is to it. So go ahead and pause, and I'll show you the answer to number five in about three seconds. Ta-da! You should get three I plus four J when you subtract that out. So the last thing then is that since these um, can be written as position vectors in terms of i and j, it makes some operations with vectors really, really easy. So here's a few things that we wanna know. If you wanna add two vectors together, you simply add their components. So if I want to add in this case v and w, to get my new component for i, I just need to add the two a's together, like this, and then add the two b's together, similar with subtraction. If you multiply by a scalar, so if I wanna do k times some vector v, you just multiply k times the a and k times the b. It's sort of like distributing. And then the vector with a magnitude of zero is called the zero vector. It has no direction, it's essentially just a dot. Now notice this zero here is written in bold, so if we wanna write the zero vector by hand, then we need to give it a little vector arrow on the top to represent the zero vector, because you can't just add the number zero to a vector, you can only add another vector to it. So let's just quickly look at a few examples. Now, most of the properties of addition and multiplication still hold when you're working on multiplying and adding with vectors. Like if you multiply a vector times one, you get the vector itself. If you add opposite vectors, you get the zero vector and so on. So you can kind of read through those properties there, but let's just go ahead and do these last few examples. So for example six, we want to add u plus v, and that is a typo. That should say v plus w, because there is no u, v plus w. So if I want to add those, v plus w is going to be equal to, I just need to take five plus six for the i's, and I get 11 times the unit vector i, and then four plus negative nine gives me minus five for j, and that's it. It really is that simple. If I wanna subtract, then I need to first make vector w, I need to know what the opposite of vector w is. So that would change this to negative six i plus nine j, and now we can add those together this is, we wanna think of this as V plus negative W, or you can just subtract the components. Either way, when we do that, 
we should get negative 1 times vector i plus 13 times vector j. Okay. For number 8, if I want to multiply v times negative 3, then I just multiply a times negative 3 and b times negative 3. So since v has 5 for a, that means this is going to be negative 15 i and then negative 12 j. Now for 9, you're going to have to do probably a couple of steps. So first we need to figure out what 4v is and what negative 2w is. Then once we have those two vectors, you can go ahead and do the subtraction. So again, hit pause, give me about three seconds, and the answer will be here. So this is what you should get. First you multiply by 4 for v, and you get 20i plus 16j. And then I went ahead and multiplied w by negative 2 so that I could just add. And so you should end up with 8i plus 34j. And so those are some operations that we can do with vectors in the coordinate plane.